when you're planning to study abroad then one of the first things you'll have to do is finalize the universities that you'd like to apply to now this is the most critical step because the universities that you choose will determine whether you get an admission offer or not now how do you go about choosing these universities is there a way to do this without the help of counselors and all these organizations which charge so much money to do this for you are there any ai tools and websites that can help you do this process quickly and more efficiently well let's find out hi everyone i am neha agrawal i'm the founder of wise up and on this channel i make videos on studying abroad job readiness research mastery and communication skills essentially all those areas where you need to become wiser to succeed in your career so if any of these topics are relevant to you you can subscribe to this channel and now let's understand how to choose universities for studying abroad the first thing you need to do whether you're going for an undergrad masters or phd abroad is to choose the country you wish to apply to for this i'd recommend looking at job opportunities scholarship options tuition fees ease of getting a visa language requirement and long term settling options if you plan to settle abroad as well for instance when it comes to computer science programs the job opportunities in the us are probably the best in the world on the other hand when it comes to scholarship opportunities us is not the best destination because the number of scholarship options for a post grad degree in the us are extremely less on the other hand Germany is a fantastic country when it comes to these scholarship opportunities. In fact, because of so many scholarship options, you can study in Germany for almost free of cost. Now, if we take the example of Canada, getting a visa there is quite tricky even though you have an admission offer from the university. On the other hand, when it comes to Singapore, once you have an admission offer, the university itself helps you getting a visa and the entire process is absolutely a breeze. So read about these things, understand what criteria is matter to you because literally every country is going to have its pros and cons and then decide which country you would like to apply to. Once you know the country, the next thing is to go through the world university rankings. This would give you a rough understanding of the universities that are out there. So for this I'd recommend looking at QS World University rankings and Times Higher Education rankings. If you're considering applying to the US, then you can look at US News rankings as well because they're quite trustworthy. Now when going through the rankings, don't just look at the World University rankings of each university, but try to filter them by program as well because it will give you a better list based on your preference. Now what I'd recommend here is to give yourself a limit For people with really good profile I'd recommend please stick to top 250 to 300 universities in the world for others with an average profile you can still go up to 450 to 500 top universities but try to keep most of your universities within this limit only now that you've looked at the rankings you have a rough understanding of the universities that exist but you're still not sure that based on your profile which universities can you target or which level or which bracket of the universities you can target So for this I'd recommend doing a basic chat GPT search. For example, most US universities do consider the GRE score. So what you can do is type a simple prompt in chat GPT saying, "Give me the GRE cutoffs or give me the GRE requirement of the top 100 universities in the US." And it will give you a range of GRE scores that different universities expect. Now if you've given the GRE it will give you a rough idea that if you have that GRE score which level of universities you can target Similarly for Germany you can give the prompt give me the GPA requirement or GPA cutoffs of the top 50 universities in Germany Of course every university looks at your entire profile and GRE or GPA might not be the only requirement but this is a good starting point to get a rough estimate of your profile and the universities that you can target Parallelly I would also highly recommend going through LinkedIn see which universities your college alumni are studying in This is because if they've graduated from your college they would have similar profile similar GPA internships extracurriculars so if they have managed to get admission in those universities chances are you can too send them a connection request and try to speak to them to learn more about their profile and this way you will not only learn about which universities you can apply to but you will get so much knowledge about the entire study abroad process as well 
Once you have more clarity on the universities, you can also visit the individual university websites to look for their curriculum, research opportunities and the kind of exposure that you are looking for. For a quick comparison, you can also use QS University Search. Simply type the name of the university and you will have a lot of data at your fingertips. For example, their TOEFL, GRE, GMAT score requirement, what is the student faculty ratio, what is their world university ranking, how many international students are studying there, etc. So this will help you compare between the different universities as well. Also, once you have more clarity about the university, you can also ask specific questions to chat GPT. For example, tell me what is the fall 2025 deadline for Georgia Institute of Technology or what is the GRE or GPA requirement for this particular program at Georgia Tech University and you will have all the important information right at your fingertips. Also, you can use ChatGPT to find the best scholarship options for you in that country and that university as well. For example, simply give the prompt, can you tell me the best scholarship options available in the US for a postgraduate program for a female Indian student? And it will give you the list of scholarship options that you can apply to. Also, when I was speaking to my students who have already gone to study abroad, they told me that during this process, they used to attend a lot of coffee chats with the universities as well. So what the universities do is that they set up meetings with the admissions office that prospective students can attend. So do keep a lookout for when these opportunities are available because then you can join these meetings to know more about the structure of the program, the admission process and any other doubts or queries that you may have. Now when it comes to foreign admissions, there is no guarantee that you will receive admit from the university that you apply to. So to give yourself a best chance, we usually recommend applying to 8 to 10 universities. And when you're applying to these universities, don't apply to the universities all of the same level. We usually apply to universities which are of different levels. For example, if you're applying to 9 universities, then you should choose 3 universities which are ambitious, which means based on your profile, they are going to be difficult to get in, but they are like your dream universities and if that happens, then nothing like it. Then what you should do is choose three universities which are in the moderate category where these universities are also pretty good and you have like a 50-50 chance of getting in. And then what you should do is choose three universities which are safe which means based on all the evaluations you've done and based on your profile you should definitely get an admit from these universities. And if by chance these are your only options left then you don't mind studying here as well. So categorize the universities that you choose into safe, moderate and ambitious. In this manner, you would have selected the universities that are best for you. I personally find this step to be really crucial and don't like the suggestions that are given by counsellors. Number one, they don't know you very well and so the kind of suggestions that they will give you in terms of the universities you should apply to might not be that accurate. Secondly, most of these counsellors, they are part of a company which has tie up with certain universities. And if they send students to those universities, they get a crazy commission amounting to 2 to 3 lakh rupees per student. So usually what these counsellors do is that they recommend most of the universities from their company portfolio and these universities might not be the best for you. So even if you are going to any counsellor, please keep your eyes open to see which universities they are recommending and whether they are really the best for you or not. Now for this entire university short listing process, I'd recommend to not rush it. Give yourself at least 15 to 20 days or up to a month so that you are able to choose the universities wisely. Now if you have any questions about this process, you can put in a comment and I'll try and clear your doubt for you. Also, once you're done shortlisting the universities and need help with your admission essays, then you can check out my study abroad programs. As part of my study abroad course, I teach you how to write admission essays like SOPs, LORs, personal statements, scholarship essays and as part of my SOP and LOR review program, I along with my team review your document for you, edit it and make it ready for submission. Till date, we've sent over 500 students to some of the top universities in the world like Columbia University, Georgia Tech, National University of Singapore, Technical University of Munich, etc. 
to know more the link is in the description and in the pinned comment and now thank you so much for watching this video and i wish you have a fantastic career ahead